Hi, I'm Stefan Spencer. I'm going to be talking to you about how to do SEO for YouTube, the number two search engine, and how to optimize your videos for higher rankings in that search engine. So who am I? I'm Stefan Spencer. I'm the co-author of The Art of SEO, co-author of Social Commerce, and author of Google Power Search, all published by O'Reilly. I founded an SEO agency in the 90s called Net Concepts. I sold it to Cavario in 2010. I invented an SEO technology platform called Gravity Stream, and I have an SEO training and coaching program at scienceofseo.com. So that's me. These are my books. But you don't really care about that. You care about getting the result for yourselves. And um, let me just share with you a little brief uh, case study example of how you can uh, achieve this, even if you're you know, a kid. <laughs> See my daughter. And uh, she started doing SEO and blogging when she was 14. And you can see in the screenshot here, she's got some YouTube videos where she's doing some um, screencasts, showing some game sheets and so forth for Neopets.com website and how to earn extra lives or earn extra points and, and things like that. So um, she monetized the site using Google AdSense. And every time people clicked on the Google ads that were um, prominently displayed on her site, she would get paid. So if a kid can do it, so can you. But here is uh, one of the easiest tools of all to do uh, SEO with for YouTube is simply just start doing some searches or typing in some keystrokes into the YouTube search engine. And the search box, you'll see uh, search suggestions based on the keystrokes that you've already typed. So these are uh, roughly in order of popularity. That gives you some good uh, brainstorming. You can also use a tool called Subal, which I covered in another segment about um, keyword uh, brainstorming. So if you go to Subal.com and you start typing in some different uh, keywords and see what the search suggestions are, not just from YouTube, uh, but also Google and Bing and Yahoo and Answers.com and so forth, that's pretty cool. You can also use Google Trends, um, but not in the way that you might be accustomed to. Uh, let me show you specifically what I mean. So if I go to google.com slash trends, and then I put in um, a, whatever, like uh, Neopets, and I want to see how that performs as a keyword in YouTube, well, I have to change from web search up here in the top to YouTube search. Most people don't even know that that even exists. That option allows me to get data back on what keywords are popular in the YouTube search results. Is that awesome or what? So be sure to use Google um, uh, Trends and uh, incorporate that into your YouTube uh, SEO um, a tool set. All right, so uh, let's now talk about what to create in terms of video content. Because if you create something that's not very uh, worthy of being watched or, or shared or uh, liked or anything like that, then it's just going to fall flat. It's not going to uh, go viral. It's not going to get a lot of views. It's not going to rank well because it's just not remarkable. And when I say remarkable, I mean Seth Godin's definition of remarkable. It's worth remarking about. It's a purple cow. So you need to create something that is uh, worth remarking about. And uh, the format of it doesn't matter whether it's a screencast recording or it's a, um, a video uh, of you, you know, a talking head sort of video, or it's a montage of uh, different images, or it's an audio podcast with some still images added to it. So it uh, is now in video form. So you've taken your audio podcast and you've uploaded it to YouTube. It could be any number of different things. Um, but, you know, this unique video-based content has to, um, again, be worthy of somebody wanting to share it, uh, link to it, blog about it, etc. So these are some different kinds of videos. Uh, this one is an explainer video that's um, you know, one of those whiteboard type of videos. Here's an explainer video that's done as an animation. Um, this one is, a, an ex I guess you could call it an explainer video, but it's just more of a viral video. 
really put Dollar Shave Club on the map. This thing went crazy viral, millions and millions of views. Uh, this is another uh, type of whiteboard uh, explainer video, but this one is, um, you know, with the guy talking and explaining and, and having that, uh, uh, actually this is not a whiteboard, it's a flip chart. Here's another whiteboard uh, video. This is from uh, one of my co-authors on the Art of SEO. And this is a, uh, a podcast, but one where they've taken the video of the podcasters speaking. Instead of using still images, they took video as well. And this is a fun science video. Uh, this is a past client of mine, uh, Steve Spangler. He's been on the Ellen Show a bunch of times and everything, doing all these crazy, amazing science experiments. And he has uh, several different YouTube channels that do really well. The Spangler Effect is one of them. He has also um, Six Science is another one, and uh, the Steve Spangler um, Science uh, podcast or um, channel. Uh, this is a screencast, which is just a screen recording, and um, you can explain different uh, software programs, or you could go through PowerPoint decks, uh, like what I'm doing here. Uh, you can just use screen recording software, such as ScreenFlow for the Mac or Camtasia uh, for PC or Mac, to uh, record the uh, screen and, uh, and your audio as the overlay. Here is a, a really popular example of a, um, a kind of an explainer video, but done with animation uh, using Extra Normal, where you pick the avatars and you give it the script, and then the avatars speak the, uh, the lines that you've given it. This is a microsite where uh, it was live video of a intern a college intern who worked all summer long at uh, the Perfetti Van Meld headquarters, for, you know, from Mentos, uh, the makers of Mentos. Uh, he worked there just sitting in front of a webcam and then chatting with people who came to the Mentos intern website, uh, as well as you could give him work to do, like, oh, hey, can you fill out the spreadsheet for me and stuff, because you know, what else is he going to do? He's just sitting in front of the computer all day uh, in front of the webcam. So that was a, a fun viral uh, live video stream websites that uh, did really well in um, social media and uh, got lots of links. So just think outside the box, basically. And then once you have this uh, really compelling, link-worthy uh, video content, then you're going to want to leverage power users to get that noticed by uh, the, a, a larger audience and then potentially to, to spill over and to like go viral basically. And right? so you go get that that snowball effect happening where it just keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger and then just kind of uh, takes off with a life of its own. So you could um, uh, create something that is, it, it um, leverages an existing meme or you create a new meme. A meme is a copy me instruction backed up by threats and or promises. That's a Great definition from a, um, that's the best definition I've ever heard. It's from an expert and, and professor in, in uh, viral memes. Um, you want to seed your link-worthy videos from a power user account. So you want to have a, a power user in your back pocket that you can um, tap into, somebody who has a big fan base. So when they submit it, it's going to get viewed by a number of people, and then that snowball effect um, happens. You can also um, uh, reach out to influencers, and we'll get to that in a little bit, reach out to influencers um, and, and offer that compelling content in a way that makes them want to share it. But it's, it's a lot easier just to have a power user in your back pocket that you can just uh, call in a favor with or, or pay them some money, and, and they seed your remarkable content. Okay, so um, video content building. It's got to be compelling, as I've said. Uh, you got to hopefully reinforce the message of your brand around and, and pick the right keywords that you want to target. Um, use a watermark so that if people steal your video, uh, your brand is still going to um, 
there's still going to be brand impressions for you, even if they've ripped off your video and are using it elsewhere. Uh, include links and references to your site, like in the video description and in the YouTube description and so forth. We'll get to that in a minute. So the title should be keyword rich and compelling, should convince the user, the, the YouTube user to click to watch your video. Uh, it's one of the most compelling things. The only thing more compelling in terms of driving the click from the YouTube search results is the thumbnail. It's um, important to be uh, concise, but also keyword rich. It's kind of a balancing act. Uh, keep it to the 62 character or less um, uh, limit. And uh, short and punchy and compelling is the key here. The description, uh, here's an opportunity for you to further add more uh, relevant keywords in, into the mix and uh, to differentiate yourself from competitors, to provide a unique selling proposition, a really great call to action, put a link to your site high up in the description so they don't have to click on the show more uh, link to or a button to see your, um, your link, but it's maybe in the first line of the description. Tags are important as well. So tags would be um, keywords that are going to kind of get this magic happening in the back, uh, and you, you don't see what these tags are um, as a as a YouTube user. Uh, you'd have to use um, you'd have to view source and view the HTML source to see what those tags are in a competitor's video. Um, but anyways, it's it is used in the uh, rankings algorithm in YouTube. Um, again, you want to do your keyword research before you um, identify the tags that you want to incorporate. Don't use throwaway words like and and to, um, cop, uh, comma separate these uh, tags and uh, put them in order of um, importance to you. So the most important, most popular keywords uh, should be the first ones in the list of tags. Um, yeah. So let's uh, talk now about annotations. Annotations are a great way to drive clicks and different user actions. Uh, if a, a viewer is watching the video and you really want them to uh, subscribe to your channel, to um, like the video, to visit your website, um, to whatever, right? You, you want to make those calls to action inside of a, an annotation. And these annotations can be added later after the video has been published and everything. A lot of these things can be changed and, and added to after the video has been published on YouTube. You can go back and change the title, the description, the thumbnail, um, the annotations, and so forth. Uh, let's yeah, let's uh, skip over location. We'll talk now about thumbnails because this is so, so critical. This is um, the screenshot over on the uh, right-hand side comes from uh, the channel of bat19.com. Bat19 just crushes it on YouTube. <clears throat> they have over 440 million views across all of their YouTube videos, and, have some, and it's amazing. They have some videos that have uh, tens of millions of views, so pretty amazing. And they're all product videos. They sell all sorts of crazy stuff like 26-pound uh, uh, gummy bears and things like that. So you can see from the screenshot that their thumbnails are compelling. They make you want to click. They're not just some talking head. The worst kind of thumbnail is one where it just looks super boring. Um, you can upload your own custom thumbnail. You just have to have a uh, – uh, you just – you have to ver have a verified YouTube account, so you just um, specify a, um, a mobile phone number. It'll, uh, YouTube will send you a text message with the verification code, then you use that in the verification. Uh, you, you just type in that code into the YouTube site, boom. Now you're a verified user, and you can upload custom thumbnails. It doesn't even have to be a frame from the video. It could be completely custom. You can add all sorts of graphics onto it, et cetera. 
All right, now um, formats don't matter. It could be a, a AVI or WMD or whatever. Uh, length of the video, try to keep it short, uh, like definitely less than 10 minutes. I'd say even less than five minutes. Uh, make it concise and punchy. You know, the usability expert Steve Krug, who wrote Don't Make Me Think, says this, write copy for your site, then cut it in half, then cut it in half again. Do the same thing for your, your video um, uh, transcripts or your video um, scripts, just to make it punchy, short and sweet, and um, value, high value add. And also bear in mind, as far as metrics are concerned, for uh, YouTube is paying much more attention not to the number of views for your video, but to the percentage of your video that users watch. That's a key, key metric. Um, transcripts. So if you override YouTube's auto-generated transcript with your own, you're going to have a much higher quality transcript because if you look at the caption, at the, the caption text or transcript text that is auto-generated by YouTube, it's full of errors. It's a joke. So definitely you want to upload your own version that's all corrected. Even better if you can also upload foreign language translations of your transcript. Then people can watch the, um, the version of your video in their foreign language. The, the audio is still the same. Um, but it now has uh, closed, it, it has um, subtitles. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. And then now you're showing up in foreign language uh, search queries too um, uh, on YouTube. You can use uh, services to um, pay, you, you pay a service to create a transcript for you, like dot sub or automatic sync. And Never turn off the ability for users to like and dislike your video. It's a crucial part of user engagement, uh, and likes are it's a, it's a crucial metric that YouTube looks at. Um, right. So when you build links to your video on YouTube, also build links to a um, a web version that's like um, embedded on your website uh, or a microsite. Like for example, uh, Blendtec has all these viral videos of uh, the founder, Tom Dixon, blending iPods, iPhones, uh, action figures, uh, ray candles, golf clubs, et cetera, et cetera, in uh, his blenders. That's pretty fun to watch, but if he only got links just to the YouTube videos, that would not help his SEO as much as if he also got links to his his own website. And what they did was they created a, a separate microsite called willitblend.com because blendtech.com is all about e-commerce, e buying their, their product, whereas willitblend.com is all about those viral videos. If I'm a journalist writing about those viral videos, I'd want to link to the microsite as well as link to the YouTube channel. So that's a great way to get some additional SEO benefit by having really popular videos. Um, you could also consider syndicating your video onto other um, uh, popular video sharing sites like uh, Blip TV and Metacafe and so forth. You could use a tool like Dropload to do that in a more um, automated fashion. So you don't have to go to each site individually. You can upload it once and then use Dropload to upload it to all the different places that you specify. Uh, reference your URL of your YouTube video and your RSS and MRSS feeds. Um, MRSS is um, a multimedia or media, really simple syndication uh, feed for folks who are grabbing podcasts and so forth automatically onto their, um, uh, into their iTunes and so forth. Um, let's see. So those are some tips for video link building. And then 
the anchor text is going to be important when people use words like click here or check this out or watch this, then that's not as helpful as if they're using keyword rich phrases uh, because Google and the search engines in general associate the anchor text of the underlying words in the link with the page that's being linked to. So, um, of course, we want diversity. We don't want it to look overly engineered with the same keyword rich phrase appearing all over the place that looks not legit, but we want diversity and um, uh, keyword rich uh, anchor text uh, to a some degree you know, to a limited degree. We want to go over the top. And then um, also just m measure your success using uh, YouTube analytics, uh, using Voot, and um, Voot looks like this. This is giving you really great insight into uh, not just number of views, but uh, other YouTube engagement metrics like likes and dislikes, favoriting, um, comments, video replies, etc. And it tracks your YouTube search rankings too. I don't know of any other tool that tracks your YouTube search rankings. You probably potentially may be tracking your search rankings in Google and Yahoo and Bing, maybe using a tool like Authority Labs or Moz.com. But what about your YouTube search rankings? It's the number two search engine. So that's where Voot comes in, V-O-O-T dot net. And then turn off your video statistics in your uh, YouTube videos because you don't want your competition to be checking you out and looking at things like uh, the, the trend over time and views and time watched and subscriptions and so forth. That's for your eyes only. Uh, it should be. So turn that off. Uh, it's just a simple little checkbox to uh, disable that. So here's where you do it. You just tick the box that says, uh, well, untick the box that says make these stats publicly available. So that was a lot of cool stuff in a, a very short little video. So I hope this was helpful to you. Um, be sure to um, follow me on Twitter, S. Spencer, and email my assistant if you would like some really cool freebies, including uh, an extended edition version of the slide deck. I can hopefully hook you up with a beta invite to Voot. Uh, I know the folks there. They're good people. Uh, I have a white paper on SEO myths. I have a how-to article on getting higher rankings in the YouTube search engine. And uh, also, I can send you the link building chapter of my book, The Art of SEO. So all those uh, awesome freebies, if you just email admin at stephanspencer.com, that's the email address of my assistant. If you have any questions for me specifically, feel free to email me at stephan at stephanspencer.com. Thanks very much for listening. This is Stephen Spencer. Have a great day.